Hi, everyone. I'm Elenki Hano. President Trump says peace talks with the Taliban are dead. The president had planned to hold secret talks at Camp David over the weekend in an effort that would have reduced U.S. troop levels in Afghanistan. Nicole Killian has more from the White House. President Trump took the world by surprise when he announced on Twitter that secret meetings with the Taliban and Afghanistan's president were off. We had a meeting scheduled. Uh, it was my idea, and it was my idea to terminate it. The announcement comes in the wake of a Taliban suicide bombing that killed 12, including a U.S. service member whose remains were returned home Saturday night. When I heard, very simply, that they killed one of our soldiers and 12 other innocent people, I said, there's no way I'm meeting on that basis. There's no way I'm meeting. In a statement, the Taliban says the canceled talks will damage America's reputation, unmask its anti-peace policy to the world even more, and increase its loss of life. Camp David is the country retreat where presidents have brokered some of history's most famous peace deals. Plans for the Camp David talks were tightly held at the highest levels, but even then there was reportedly some pushback within the administration about inviting the Taliban to meet with the president. I took my own advice. I like the idea of meeting. I've met with a lot of bad people and a lot of good people during the course of the last almost three years. But even members of the president's own party objected to inviting the Taliban just days before the anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. We're not thinking a lot about terrorism lately because we haven't had, thank God, a major attack on the United States. But that has come at the cost of having to have a forward deployed presence in, for instance, Iraq and Afghanistan. President Trump says he would still like to pull out of Afghanistan, but only if it's the right time. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. Let's bring in CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett. Major, thanks so much for joining sure. us. These Camp David talks, uh, as we just heard, were previously secret plans. Is yes. it clear why the president decided to disclose the plans and the cancellation? Well, one thing is clear about President Trump. The nation has come to know this very well. He loves the big reveal. He's captivated by large headlines, ones he frequently sets in motion. And clearly, this idea of separate peace talks at Camp David with the Taliban and the Afghan government qualifies as a big reveal. Well, when he decided to cancel it, the president couldn't help himself because if he canceled it and kept it a secret, there'd be no big reveal. And I think he also wanted to send a signal, not just to the Afghan government, that has been deeply worried about the course and direction of these negotiations with the Taliban, that the president was reconsidering the whole basis of those negotiations and what they produced so far, and to send a signal to the Taliban that the president was also having second thoughts and more willing than he had previously expressed for U.S. forces to remain there and remain at current force levels. Uh, Major, what about the timing of these talks? Uh, they were scheduled just days before the anniversary of the September 11th attacks at Camp David. Um, why would the White House schedule these negotiations at that place at that time? Well, taking into account the president's agreed upon impetus for these negotiations. Remember, these negotiations weren't happening without President Trump being aware of them. Uh, his envoy to the Taliban meeting in Qatar had been engaging in these talks for weeks and weeks and weeks. So that was on a schedule all of its own. Mm. And there had been an announcement, Elaine, last week, we all remember it, of a tentative agreement, right. one that was handed to the Afghan government. They were not consulted about it. They were essentially handed it. These are the outlines, take it or leave it, or we're going to take it and you're going to have to live with the consequences. So there is a sense of this that it was on its own time schedule. And stepping back from it, there's no good time to invite the Taliban to Camp David, ever. Mm. Under any set of circumstances, I think Republicans and Democrats would agree about that. But to the president's larger point and to Secretary of State's Mike Pompeo's point yesterday, you don't always bring your best friends to places like Camp David. And if you're trying to end a war, you're by definition negotiating with someone who is an enemy. But I think everyone in America, Republican or Democrat, would put the Taliban in a very special category. They were the non, they were the government effectively in Afghanistan that gave safe haven to Al Qaeda. And Al Qaeda carried out the 9 11 atrocities. And the Taliban has never renounced that, never decided it was or declared that it was a mistake, essentially believes that was a legitimate part of jihad. 
Well, that puts them in a completely and fundamentally different category than Anwar Sadat, the head of Egypt, who was brought to Camp David, or Yasser Arafat, the head of the Palestinian Liberation Organization, people that the United States had definite issues with, to be sure. But the Taliban and al-Qaeda is in a very different category, and that's the part that the president has to explain. And now that he's canceled these talks, at least for the moment, and I would say we should underline that just for the moment, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, they're dead. Well, guess what? There's still an issue. The Taliban controls nearly half of the terrain in Afghanistan. It is a potent terroristic fighting force. Americans, NATO troops, and Afghan security forces are still imperiled by the Taliban's presence. And if the president wants to fulfill that promise to leave Afghanistan, there's only one entity to talk to, the Taliban. So at some point, maybe these, or likely, I guess, that's my sense of it, these talks will be revived with probably a different set of assumptions and a different set of goals, maybe, but I don't think they could be described as dead permanently. So to follow up, Senator Bob Menendez, the top Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said he was unaware of the Camp David meeting with the Taliban. Here's what he and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer said yesterday about the canceled talks. Let's listen to that. I don't know how you bring uh, the perpetrator of those who gave uh, refuge uh, to the perpetrator of September 11th as we approach the 18th anniversary to Camp David uh, when they're in the midst of conducting attacks uh, which recently created the death of, of an American. The bottom line is that the leader of Afghanistan, Ghani, who most people think has done a lot better job than his predecessor, has been basically excluded. And he's never met with the Taliban. For the U.S. to meet with the Taliban and not have the leader of Afghanistan to meet with the Taliban is something that's doomed to failure. So, Major, we should note it was not just Democrats, of course, who voiced objections to this idea. How concerned are some in Congress about how the White House is approaching Afghanistan? Well, a lot of concerns. And look, there is, I would say, in general, a bipartisan consensus that leaving Afghanistan is a good idea and is a policy objective worth pursuing. But this is now the third administration I've covered that having that policy goal and pursuing it is fraught with not only policy implications, national security implications, and potential political peril. And what is, I think, important to note about Charles Schumer's soundbite just a moment ago is think about this. There have been two elections in Afghanistan. They have not been perfect, but they're elections. They're democratic processes played out in public. And whatever this administration thinks about the previous Secretary of State, John Kerry, he spent a very long time, the better part of a three or four day weekend in Afghanistan after the second election, working out a power sharing arrangement between Ashraf Ghani, the current president, and Abdullah Abdullah, the, essentially the co executive. That's the United States working in concert through a democratic process, imperfect though it may be, in Afghanistan for that country's future, and to essentially take that entire government and separate it from these talks, mm -hmm. put it completely on the sideline and only deal with a non-legitimate government that acts as if it's in exile in Qatar, raises serious questions about United States intentions, United States commitment to the Afghan government, which it tried and worked very hard to create in the first place, and what the end goals are in Afghanistan. Now, I've talked to a couple of lawmakers today who said one of the problems with Afghanistan is we keep talking about it as an ongoing war, and there are warlike dimensions to it. Mm -hmm. But they say it's much closer to a peacekeeping operation, mm -hmm. and that's the way we should conceptually think about this. We're trying to maintain peace in a place that, if we are not there in a peacekeeping role, could become riven by civil war and then become a launching point for terrorist attacks against us. Thinking about it in that construct perhaps might soften some of the desire to leave Afghanistan. But the point I'm trying to make here is twofold, Elaine. One, there's an Afghan government that is put in the cold by mm -hmm. this administration. What are the implications of that? Second, three administrations I've covered want to leave Afghanistan, but when they get to the nitty gritty of doing that and the implications of it, can't quite do it. There's something important about that fact repeating itself over and over. Yeah, and the implications of a peacekeeping mission, though, would seem to suggest a long-term presence, which is precisely not what this administration uh, says it supports. Right, but it's something we've done in many other places mm -hmm. 
once we think about it in that regard. Mm -hmm. How long have we been in the Korean Peninsula? Right, right. A very, very long time. Be why? To maintain the peace, not to fight a war, even mm -hmm. though its war is not technically over, it's still an armistice. We're there in a peacekeeping role to keep the peace. And in that sense, perhaps it is not just the policy, the money, and the methods, but what the way we think about it and the way we conceptually decide what our long-term goals are. Maybe it's not war, maybe it's not defeating the Taliban, mm -hmm. maybe it's accepting them as a regional force of some significance that we either cannot or will not defeat on military terms by keeping the peace. Perhaps that creates a different political environment around a very tough set of policy considerations. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that notion sort of gains traction here uh, in the wake of, of the disclosure of these failed talks. Um, Major, I do want to ask you about another topic. The president is denying that he had anything to do with American service members refueling during stopovers at a small airport near his Turnberry Resort in Scotland. This comes as the Air Force is now looking into that and why some of their military crews stayed at the president's resort. Here's what Mr. Trump said about this right when a plane stops at a massive international airport and gets fuel i don't own the airport when pilots stay i own a lot of different places soon you'll find that out when i because i'll be at some point prior to the election i'm going to be given out a financial report of me and it'll be extremely complete i'm going to give out i'm going to give out my financial condition and you'll be extremely shocked that the numbers are many many times what you think i don't need to have somebody take a room overnight at a hotel all right the president has been steadfast in not releasing mm -hmm. details about his personal finances do we know anything more about the supposed financial report and the, what would the significance of that be i certainly know nothing more about it it came as a surprise to many reporters out there on the south lawn the mm -hmm. president has released financial disclosure forms said over and over again that's all you need to know need to know the american public and to his credit, and it's worth noting, he did not release tax returns as every previous candidate for the presidency did in the previous 40 years, and he was elected anyway. The White House says, and the president says, that's a settled issue. But it's clear now that the president finds some political reason to say more about his financial condition. We don't know what it is. We don't know if it's going to include tax returns. I think if it definitely was to contain tax returns. The president would have said that. That he did not lends me to believe, based on my long experience with him, it'll be something in between a financial disclosure report and tax returns, possibly something asserting that in no way, shape, or form has he or the Trump organization benefited from his time as president. But this issue about Air National Guard refueling stops at Glasgow Presswick Airport, which is near the president's golf resort at Turnberry. All right, the president's correct. He doesn't own the airport, but the airport has been financially struggling. More than 600 flights there in the past three or four years have, with Defense Department contractors, plowed money into that airport. Why is that airport significant? Well, if tourists are going to come to Turnberry, they need an airport nearby. Keeping that airport afloat is not in, of insignificant importance to the Trump Organization or the Turnberry Resort. Now, those are just facts. I'm not suggesting the president did or didn't do anything, but those are salient facts. And there's an investigation, not just by the Air Force, but by the House Oversight Committee as well. All right, Major, thank you so much for helping to sort through all of those developments on this Monday. Always great to see you. My pleasure.